the iPad 10th generation was recently released by Apple. It is 1.07 pounds lighter and thinner than previous tablets. The fact that the release of a tablet is such a big deal nowadays does not surprise people, but a few years ago no one thought people would spend money on such a device and that it was a passing trend. Before we get started make sure to like the video, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon. Tablet computers are related to the earlier pen computing technology. Pen computing technology simply refers to the use of a touchscreen device and a stylus instead of a keyboard, keypad, or mouse. The first patent for a system that recognizes handwritten characters by analyzing handwriting motion was issued in 1915. However, the first demonstration of using a tablet and handwriting recognition instead of a keyboard was not until 1956. The RAND tablet, developed by the RAND Corporation in 1963, was one of the first pen-driven computer interfaces. The Dynabook, a concept educational computer developed by Alan Kay in 1972, was the next instance of something similar. It had to weigh less than a kilogram, have a screen capable of displaying at least a million pixels, and have the same functionality as a laptop computer. However, the Dynabook's intended audience was children, not adults. Following that, a company called Pencept developed the PenPad 200, a handwriting-only computer terminal with a digitizing tablet and an electronic pen as input methods. Apple was already at the forefront of contributing to our modern use of tablets in 1987. Former Apple CEO John Scully coined the term PDA, personal digital assistant and developed the Apple Knowledge Navigator concept. This device was the inspiration for iCloud, iPad, Siri, and FaceTime, as it combined touchscreen tablet hardware, an intelligent agent, video conferencing, and internet connectivity. Many other well-known companies, including Fujitsu, Nokia, Toshiba, and HP, released hardware that can now be considered the forefathers of the modern tablet. The Microsoft Tablet PC prototype, demonstrated by Microsoft CEO Bill Gates in November 2000, was a watershed moment in the history of tablet PCs. Microsoft Tablet PCs were created to address business needs such as note-taking and to be used by users who perform rugged fieldwork. The first prototype was equipped with pen computing extensions and ran a beta version of Windows XP, dubbed Whistler. It captured on-screen handwriting and drawing for immediate manipulation. Beginning in 2002, Microsoft partnered with OEM partners such as Acer, Fujitsu, ViewSonic, Motion Computing, HP, and others to launch a variety of tablet PCs. Microsoft's release of Windows XP Tablet PC Edition included digital ink extensions for Office XP, the Tablet PC Input Panel, Windows Journal for handwritten notes, and Microsoft Reader for viewing e-books. Fujitsu had the longest track record of collaboration with Microsoft, dating back to 1993 with the development of the Stylistic 500 tablet. Despite the long history of other companies developing tablet computers, Apple appears to be the only company associated with ushering in the modern era of tablet computing and bringing it to the consumer market. The first iPad was released in 2010 and was described as a magical and revolutionary device at an unbelievable price by then Apple CEO Steve Jobs. Tablet PCs bombed in the consumer market prior to the release of the iPad due to a slew of unresolved issues, but the iPad revitalized the market. Soon after, and in the same year as the iPad, Samsung released the Galaxy Tab and BlackBerry released the Playbook. Samsung's release spawned a slew of other, similarly successful devices, but BlackBerry's offering did not fare as well. This was because the device needed to be connected to another BlackBerry device in order to be used. The BlackBerry operating system was updated in 2012 to address user complaints and suggestions, but the playbook was never able to recover from its previous harsh criticism. The release of Amazon's Kindle in 2007 was another defining moment for tablet computers. 
Despite the fact that the first model was not particularly impressive, it paved the way for future growth in the ebook and e-reader markets. The Kindle was released on iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, Mac, PC, and BlackBerry, making it truly multi-platform, which is highly valuable and desired today. Following the release of the iPad, tablets running other operating systems began to flood the market. The Motorola Zoom, Android, HP Slate 500, Windows, and Fusion Garage Juju were among them, Linux. The HTC Flyer was one of the first small form factor tablets to hit the market. The term, small form factor, refers to motherboard specifications that are designed to reduce the volume of a desktop computer. The iPad Air 2 is the most recent example of this form factor. Tablet computers first appeared in popular culture in 1966. PADDs were tablet-style computers used by Starfleet, the Klingon Empire, and other Star Trek organizations, personal access display device. It had a touch screen with buttons above and below the screen that could be used with a stylus. The crew of Stanley Kubrick's 1968 film, 2001, A Space Odyssey, used a newspad to view video content. A tablet PC is even mentioned in the literature. In Douglas Adams's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a popular radio show later turned into a book, an e-book device with a screen that lights up and buttons to navigate through the book is used. Worldwide tablet sales reached 195.4 million units in 2013, owing primarily to an increase in the production of lower-end, smaller screen tablets and more first-time buyers entering the tablet market. Tablets are now more affordable to consumers on a tight budget, and Android tablets, with their low prices, wide variety, and user-friendly interfaces, have been a driving force behind much of this accessibility. Currently, approximately 20% of U.S. citizens own and use tablets. The total number of tablet shipments reached 383.3 million in 2018. The tablet market and the use of tablets by people on a daily basis appear to be expanding. It may have taken some time for these devices to become truly useful and functional in the eyes of the consumer but manufacturers now understand that hardware is only half of the battle. User experience, intuitive software, and excellent timing are all factors that have elevated the tablet to the status of a household device that many people now refuse to live without. As of early 2021, Apple, Microsoft, and Google are the industry's dominant players. Today's devices include the Nexus, Galaxy Tab, iPad Air, and Amazon Fire. These devices have hundreds of millions of pixels, run a variety of widgets, and rarely use a stylus, as Kay had imagined. Perhaps you could say we surpassed Kay's expectations. Time will tell what other advancements in tablet technology we can expect in the future. This was the evolution of the tablets. We hope you like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more videos about the evolution of things. Thank you for watching.